I'm calling this meeting to order at 5.37 p.m. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> and now, public comments. Doing great job. Okay. No public comments? <laughs> All right, and next up is a motion to approve the previous minutes from October 21st, 2019. Second. All in favor? All right. Thank you. <laughs> and next, uh, discussion and possible action to recommend event support funding for the 91st annual 89er celebration. And um, just in case you need uh, some previous numbers on that, going back in time, it looks like FY15, uh, they were awarded uh, event support at, at $2,000, FY16 was 2450 then 17, 18, and this past year were a consistent $3,000 of event support each year. And that's what they're asking for this year? Correct. Mm -hmm. Any questions about uh, 89ers? And no. something that uh, we chatted about beforehand was that um, like any recommendations that the CDB makes, I'll take those recommendations to the city manager for final approval, and then I'll talk with the, with Kim, the clerk, in terms of you know, revenue for the year, we can plan this out to where we're not, we're not going to just go write checks to all of these entities tomorrow because they're, they're happening throughout the year and you know, obviously we don't know what our revenue is going to look like nine months from now. So uh, I'll work with Kim to figure out that kind of like a calendar of when would be beneficial for each organization as well as when would it be beneficial or appropriate for our budget year to make sure that calendar of funding makes sense to everybody involved. I might make a recommendation mm -hmm. that if if we're going to keep doing this one time, maybe add a slot where they can ask for a specific, you know, funds received by this date. So we kind of have an idea when they need them. Yeah. Maybe, you know, because if we're going to make yeah. the decision one time, if somebody says, I don't need it till August, yeah, there's absolutely. no reason no. that we pay them in, I mean, yeah, that's January. A, that's a great recommendation. And I'll, uh, even though that's not part of like the actual application, yeah. I'll be sure to go in and, and have those conversations with them anyway. Just to say, uh, you know, if we write you a check in nine months from now, this isn't going to kill you, yeah. correct? So, yeah, so I'll go ahead and do that, even though it's not part of the actual application. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe what they use for advertising. Yeah, and yeah. some of them, so they may need it so now or, or, or it may be something that they don't yeah. need. You know, sure. and hopefully we get lucky and it'll be kind of spread out throughout yeah. the year. Yeah, and some events, you know, their funding request is a you know super small portion of their overall budget. Mm -hmm. In some events, it's just it's a much greater proportion. So that might have something to do with the calendar of when they you know get funding too. So yeah, yeah good point. All right, so we're looking for a motion on the event funding for the 8900 day. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Any second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 next speed. Everybody's hungry tonight. <laughs> All right, next up is discussion and possible action to recommend event support funding for BCW Pro Wrestling. And they requested $1,000 for FY20 and... Two events. Right. Yes, right. two events. They, it's basically the same as the previous year, even though the previous year he made two separate requests of 500 mm -hmm. So same request as previous year, but it, it is one, one request as opposed to two. Questions or comments on that? Do we have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, 
next discussion and possible action to recommend event support funding for Guthrie's territorial Christmas celebration. And Christmas is one of the rare events that their request has gone down. Um, and from like previous levels and historically, like in uh, FY17 they requested eight, FY18 was seven, then uh, this past year was five, and they're requesting five again this year. Five hundred. Five thousand. Sorry. Five thousand. Yes. Sir. That's because Kaylin is doing an awesome job as president. <laughs> <laughs> I think that their their fundraising you might be onto something there. Yeah. <laughs> Good president. Yeah. Good. It sounds like their fundraising activities have gone well this year. So, last couple of years. Much positive. Any other so questions or comments? <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a motion to approve the recommendation? Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Next up, possible action to recommend event support funding for Independence Day celebration. What's that amount? Five thousand. And that it was five thousand. Does that still leave him eat, eating thirteen thousand dollars of this? Yeah, I was thinking. I was wondering that same thing. Who else? Yeah. What yes, sponsor? You know, if we've got an extra thousand dollars. Right. That might be the place to drop it. Let me see. He has he gets he requests five thousand from the city. Right. He gets sixty two hundred in donations in mm -hmm. uh, private sponsorships, mm -hmm. and so he spends, you know, according to his last year's budget, thirteen seven. Is uh, uh, there? Because I think what he does is a pretty pretty big benefit to the city. That's a huge draw. They're drawn out of Edmond. That's a huge draw. That's a huge draw. That would be a great sales tax. But we're drawing out of, we've all been drawing out of Edmond the last two years is because July 4th is falling on in the middle of the week. Right. And then we have delayed our ours to the weekend when everybody else does it on the 4th. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. an additional consideration while we would look at the last two years and sit there and go, wow, we drew 25,000 people. Well, that's right, because they didn't know where else to go. We had the only fireworks show in the state going on on a Saturday. And, and, it's a, and they'll come back, though. That's a good point. That I guarantee is, you they'll come back. I'm not saying they won't come back. I'm saying I would temper, yes, you do have a good I would temper future success of saying, hey, we're going to draw another 25,000, 30,000 people because there is... Uh, this, will, this year will be a good example. But it's a safe bet. Somebody out of those 25,000 people is going to buy some gas, going to get a motel room. They're going to do something in this town. They're going to spend some money. We'll be, so it's a good investment. This next year will be a good gauge of how much it draws For versus sure. these last few years, I think. But yeah, no, it's worth, it's worth definitely worth the investment to find out. It's one so, of the so, so, so is the motion going to be to increase, increase that to $6,000? Can we increase on what they've asked for? You can. Um, keep in mind that uh, it is only November right now. It's, since it's a you know a July event, we have we've got time to you know mull that over a little bit. Okay. We to you know add to it. We've got time to. Okay. And it leaves it available for other things too. If that, that's okay. a good idea. I like that. So the motion would be for the original five thousand dollars you're asking for, right? Yes, sir. Right. the motion. <laughs> do I have a motion to approve? You have a motion to approve. And do I have a second? I'll second. Excellent. All in favor? Aye. 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 And next support. Next is possible action to recommend event support funding for military veterans rodeo. And according to my records, that um, the last one to three days after Veterans Day. Yeah, um, so he, he has a number of events throughout the year down there at the, the rodeo grounds. And starting in FY15, uh, we sponsored that at, uh, at $1,000, 16 was $1,600, FY17 went to $2,500, and it's been at 2500 since FY17. Uh, he did stop by and speak with us and said that this is going to be his last year uh, managing the the guy that was here the other night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when his uh, uh, it, it, when his the lease is up at the end of this year, he's going to do something else. Probably cost him too much. <laughs> I would think that's so. ridiculous. Yeah. Well, he does all that. That's his own money. Yeah. That's what I probably 
documents get out if you have the mo and work you know all the so what's the estimate for this year well 2500 so what's going to happen next year i mean not that it matters for this just interest it's um it's over whoever takes over the lease from, uh for the because the lease is up to the county fair board i believe something like something along those lines my understanding it's a little more complex the lease is a little more complicated in that it has some relationship between the logan county economic development council exactly mm -hmm. and in the city the city and, and, and the uh, uh, logan county as well yeah. all three entities have something to do with it so they've all worked themselves into it it takes someone smarter than i have to yeah. figure that out <laughs> <laughs> sure well yeah so you, but yeah it's up for i guess whatever application process is going to have as soon as this lease runs out it runs out and then if it stays empty and nobody picks up the lease then nothing happens there yeah. I, I have a feeling that there'll be a number of entities trying to figure out whose who's problem it becomes. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The city's going to go, uh, okay. Yahtzee. Exactly. Uh, Any further questions, comments? Do I have a motion to approve the recommendation? I'll approve it. Ooh. Do I have a second? All in favor. <laughs> I thought they were going to. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. And next, discussion and possible action to recommend event support funding for Oklahoma's International Bluegrass Festival. And OIBF uh, has been uh, at a $2,500 request since uh, FY16. Each year it's been the same. Um, still is. Yes, sir. And I think um, looking at all of these events, I believe that uh, that 2500 is probably the smallest uh, proportionally to their entire budget of, mm -hmm. of any yeah. of the organizations, I believe. Um, Do they have to collect any of the, t the tax that funds you for the camp sites? No. Not for campsites. Um, they do. Um, there are, um, you know, a good number of hotel rooms yeah. that are booked. But in terms of, there's no hotel motel tax associated with uh, the campsites. I don't know. In terms of like a privately owned, like you know, out by the golf course or somewhere else. But that's out of Those are probably more permanent. Yeah, I don't know if they if hotel motel taxes is, is. I think it is. Is it? I haven't. Yeah. Really on on that uh, the the RV sites where you yeah. can plug in. Yeah, I think it is. Okay. I think they have a tax just like motel there. I think set up the same way. Yeah, I never thought about that. It's interesting. Talk about it. Well, because when you go back and you look you at put the parking meters in down there. You look at the, the budgets that we get back, I don't see anything for anybody that says hotel, motel tax on a line item for the budget. Um, when you go through all the budgets, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? For everybody who's done something like that, doesn't matter if it's the military veterans or people staying out like uh, uh, the gentleman doing the, the rodeo or whatnot, all the budgets we've gotten back from them, none of them have a line item showing, showing an expenditure of paying the hotel, motel tax on the budget. So if we so then that's just me going off the top of my head because yeah. I, looked, I looked at every single one that just don't recall seeing it. Anyway. I don't recall. I, don't, I would I would have seen something that sat there and said, "Hey, they actually are paying hotel motel tax." It's not a line. Now it could be. I'm not saying anything about anything. I'm saying it could be a, a, a simple uh, administrative oversight. They paid it. It didn't make it into the budget that was submitted back on the paperwork. It's an easy thing to not do. Uh, but I'm saying I'm pretty sure if we look back through the, the other packages, you know, there's no specific line item where it sits there and says we paid the city lodging and the, the state city lodging hotel motel tax at 14 percent like everybody else does. But do they list? Um, they list sales tax. Sales tax, yeah. But that'd be an interesting thing to look. They do have just to see if it what the I don't know what the law is or the rule is. I mean, or ordinance. Right. Well, or I have no idea. If they do list like bluegrass list um, uh, in under their expenses a uh, travel and lodging expense. So I just assume that they 
like if they pay you know sixty six hundred to the hotels for their talent, mm -hmm. I assume that that what they paid to whatever it's called now. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm the worst tourism director on the planet. <laughs> That's okay. the best Western. Well, what you're saying is they're paying to the hotel. The hotel. <laughs> yeah, so right. they would necessarily list that out but under their expenses, well, right? Yes. Well, we'll figure this out in one real quick second. Let's see here. Where is the... Which one? Where is it at? Bluegrass Festival? It's the last one. Oh, so that's what I thought. Was second last to last. Second to last. Uh, Gil, the Gil yeah, Oklahoma Bluegrass Festival is a nonprofit organization, therefore they do not pay taxes. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Most of these are non-profit organizations, therefore they are tax exempt. How do they pay sales tax then? Um, these are the, this is why I asked to see all of them for the last few years. Well, they can still have sales tax. Yeah. They, still, they just can't end up with a profit. Right. Well, and you could still take it to probably pay hotel money. You've got to spend it's, all their profit. Tax exempt yeah, exempt you from any sort of federal income, income tax yeah. or state income tax. Mm -hmm. So you could still have sales tax for sure. any other. Some of them don't. Yeah. Some of them don't have to. But paying, but paying for their talent is not the same as what, we, what you brought up. Yeah. Yeah. Paying for the people who bring in their piece for three days and taking electricity and water and paying that. I mean, that's a, it's a legitimate question because it is lodging in the city for three days. And somebody is paying their paying for those spots. That's a good question. It's a good question to investigate for future action, I guess, or at least clarification. It's it's a legitimate question across the board. Yeah, and with the also though with the the campground, um, that's part of a lease agreement between the the city and the Bluegrass Festival. So the way that, that lease agreement itself is our yeah is our that that would govern how that relationship works for the city council and OIV have just renewed that lease this past year. So for the next whatever it is, four sure. or five years. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, so is that what the camping fees are? The twenty-eight thousand? Uh, that's what they. That, that's, that's, they yeah, that's what they. Yeah, that's what they. Yeah, that's what they. Don't say it. I didn't see anything. Well, I may say expenses all the time. Yeah, yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. I didn't see that being specific. Yeah, yeah. So, no, because their their expenses we're, we're oh, talking yeah, about their expenses of them paying the other hotels to put up their talent. Mm -hmm. That's not. Talk about apples and oranges. Yeah. So, in terms of the campground, yeah, city Doesn't council could, the the city council and the festival could re renegotiate that sure. lease. How are they? Yeah, just should, make sure yeah, it's facility rent. It was the rent. Yeah, that's yeah. your facility rent about. is probably your lease. Oh yeah. There it is. Thirty-nine twenty. Is that what it was? Yeah. Okay. That sounds. Yeah, yeah about right. That's cheap. It really is. It really is cheap. For how many years? Five years more. Oh, I pay that each year. Yeah. I'd probably something we could look at. I'd ask and have Leroy we'll look into it and see. Or you maybe have any. And I believe they, they've also, at least this past year, maybe previous, they have, like with the improvements that have been made to the uh, like electric and water uh, infrastructure, they've also, you know, written the city a check to help. Uh, so, yeah, sure. Recoup some of those yeah, costs as well. So. Yeah, that's costly too. That's yeah. for sure. And we put in new gravel down through there as well because I guess the flood carried a lot of it yeah. off. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Electricians aren't cheap. Uh, <laughs> Especially no, when we get called out at all hours of, of the day and night <laughs> to solve problems. <laughs> Jim, Jim Case electric, he would know that. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, comments? Uh, a motion to approve the recommendation? I'll make a motion. Okay. Second? Okay. Two seconds. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Staff comments. Um, I'll go ahead and start with, with Burla since he's not here. Um, <laughs> Bert, like the last uh, two and a half days, Burla has been uh, the lazy E person. Um, That's why I can't get a hold of her. Yeah. They, um, no, she's in, she's in a black hole. They got, they cell phones are as useless uh, yeah. out there. It's a yeah. disaster um, in terms of cell phone usage. But um, this uh, this past weekend, people started showing up for a new event that they have out there called the Barrel Futurities of America. That's what they're doing now? Yes. Today? Okay. They, they are, the contestants and folks arrived this past weekend, and they started the championships today, I believe. And I think it's uh, one of, if not the biggest, 
uh, one of these type events in the world. And so uh, Verla and Verla's counterpart from the Edmund CDB have been out there all day long in the last two days, starting at like 7 a.m., uh, welcoming people with uh, with Hoboken coffee and Missy's Donuts and saying, welcome to Lazy E, please come to Guthrie. And so uh, for two straight days, they, uh, Verla was saying that they, like, she's met people from literally all over the country and Canada and all over the place. So it's a, uh, it's a huge uh, new event. And this is the first time that we've tried doing this kind of collaborative with Edmund. Uh, we've provided uh, some welcome refreshments in the morning and then Edmund did some things in the afternoon. And so Verla and Edmund's Verla, uh, they, they had a, like a hospitality uh, uh, golf cart that they drove around. I'm sure it was completely safe and not reckless <laughs> whatsoever. Um, but it seems to have been, it seems to have worked really well. I think we're going to try it again with their next new uh, event in January, which cool. is the International Finals Rodeo. Lazy E has been on a roll with um, camera stealing like, really great events from other places, and so they've they've been able to get two um, big events that have moved from Oklahoma City to Lazy E, uh, and then they've also um, uh, the Little Bridges Rodeo, which is another like That's world a class deal. Huge. They uh, uh, they've re-signed their agreement for the future, so. Lazy is doing really well. You should convince someone to build a hotel over by that. Yeah, there's many people that come to that. I mean, I know a lot of them camp and stuff like that. Yeah. It'd be probably a good Stop investment. That. And it'd be in our... That's inside city limits. Is that inside city limits? I mean, would that count towards your... Sewer so road in I-35? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. inside sewer road. That's yeah. inside sewer yeah. city limits. Yeah. Stick it out there right there on the sewer road. Yeah. There you go. We'll yeah. buy that gas station and put it in right there and yep. make your own chicken. Yep. We've had this. <laughs> they do make good chicken. Yeah, the you need to try it. It really is good. I've had some discussions with the director out there about. Uh, in the past, it's always it's always been about uh, you know rooms along I thirty five, and no like, lazy E has never really marketed towards the uh, bed and breakfasts. And the more you know, the, the downtown amenities in terms of like you know rooms, and meeting with their director, he, he didn't even realize what we had, uh, other than like our I thirty five chain hotels. And the more I talk with them, the more they're like, oh, we do have people who would really enjoy staying at these places. And so we're going to try to do more in terms of encouraging their contestants and patrons, um, especially with these newer events. It's a little bit different. Uh, in their, with Little Bridges, they're actually extending the time that they'll be here for it by another three or four days. And so those folks, when I, when I understand it, they, they would be more amenable to, um, you'd much rather stay in a bed and breakfast or in a higher quality inn than just being stuck, no offense to I-35, but being in, like, you know, uh, you know, I don't know how to say it. I've been somebody. More homely environment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like a static cookie yeah. and cutter room. Yeah. So we're going to try. We're going to push that more than we have in the past. Um, uh, and we've been communicating more with Lazy E. Like we have regular monthly meetings now with their uh, leadership folks. So I think that relationship is. is I don't better. remember his name. The Oriental guy that has the sleep in out here. Patel? Is it Patel? I think it's Patel. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's Indian. Okay. Yeah, see? He was telling me yeah, that thank you. though they used to kind of have, the, the Lazy E used to really push rooms for Guthrie during the, uh, for the game wardens during the uh, expo. Mm -hmm. And they quit doing that and they took all the game wardens to heaven. Mm -hmm. So we need to try to figure out how to get the game wardens back at Guthrie. Yeah. But that's a, that's a huge draw. That's a lot of, there's a lot of business there. He was really upset that he lost it all. Yeah. Sure. You know, because there's a bunch of them. Yeah. They pull in all of them from across the state.
state of Oklahoma to be in that thing. Is the city of Edmond providing some kind of benefit? Just keep in mind that the city of Edmond, their, their tourism budget is a lot bigger. And they have a lot more amenities. Well, uh, they, they're probably right there <coughs> around 2nd Street or something. They've got movie theaters. They've got places they've to got eat. The they, they could go yeah, golf. They could, they, they, I mean, there's a lot of things that well, they can go well, that's There's a lot of things there that they can do. They can't do right there on Cobill and that big uh, And I think that was a draw that got right. away from here. Oh, oh, really? Is that where they're? Yeah, that's right where Chamber of Commerce is off. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's what they're trying to do. And they're, and they're trying to bring them into that area right there. That's only what, uh, four miles from from uh, Waterloo Road, and it's like four more miles up to uh, Lazy or five miles, so you're looking at probably ten miles total. But and you're closer if you come back to Guthrie. Yeah, you're only about a couple miles. Four miles at the most, maybe five miles. Yeah. And if they could build a hotel out there somewhere nearby, they'd fix all that. And I, like, keep in mind that Edmund and Guthrie really do offer different things. The people who want to, from those competitions, people who want certain things are going to get those things where they, in Edmond, people who want certain things are going to get them in Guthrie. So the more, the more I think about it, we, we're just different offerings. Your stables have Not, rooms upstairs, can you imagine? It would be like a whorehouse. <laughs> There's no way that you can... <laughs> well, I mean, they were thinking of, of, of the blue belt. You know? Yeah, I was going to say, don't, 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 don't <laughs> that lady, uh, don't but I think it would be so many cowboys If Guthrie focuses on what Guthrie does really, really well, uh, Edmund can't compete with that. But also, we can, you know, we're not going to be able to compete with certain things that Edmund can provide. So yeah. it's a matter of focusing right. on what we do really, really well, as opposed to just thinking of Edmund solely as, you know, competition for Lazy E. But one thing that uh, Lazy E mentions every single time that I talk with them is their folks, the people who compete and stay out there, when they come to either Guthrie or Edmund, it's, a lot of times it's later in the evening and they're looking for some place to eat dinner at, you know, 9.30 at night. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's a little complicated to find yeah. those places sometimes. In both Guthrie and Edmund. Any additional staff comments? Oh, yeah, we're at that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's the, Verlo's not here tonight because she's been working non-stop for like, oh, oh yeah, we're a good one. What are we talking about? <laughs> Verla only she's a twenty hour a week part time person says so I think she's just about met her twenty hours for the week already. Um, but I really appreciate her willingness just to get out there and be the most social person on the planet, um, talking to countless people who are visiting out there. Um, the only other staff comment I have is that I went to the Oklahoma Film and Music Conference this past Friday. That would kind of uh, the last session of it talked about this kind of the state of filmmaking in Oklahoma, and you can attest to this. The num the number of films that are being made in Oklahoma has um, this year will be the the biggest year Oklahoma's ever had in terms of movies and television and what's being produced here, and they're the state level. <laughs> like you're working me up to like a big announcement. Blame <laughs> it. Too much pressure. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. But they, if if things continue with how the state is projecting, they're projecting that the film industry and film and television in the next couple of years will be the fastest growing industry that Oklahoma has ever had in the state. Is there any sort of numbers on what percentage of that ends up in our area in Guthrie? Um, is it a large or even just ballpark? Is it a large percent or small? I haven't seen those numbers in terms of what uh, what comes to Guthrie specifically. I know like unique entities can tell you like you know how it's affected them, mm -hmm. whether it's you know hotels or uh, uh, I know even like coffee shops have done like really really well this past yeah. quarter and. Um, we've had an awful lot of, uh, of film production here in the last few months. 
I think you need to convince these film people to invest there's big money here. I mean, <laughs> it's, well, I mean, it's, it's they're a, coming from LA. Yeah, you know, no, there's they, a, what would it cost them to build last, a building I've, in LA? I've spent the last six weeks. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of information I can shed on that. I don't know if this is the right place for it, but I, there's cuts both ways, right? Because what comes with demand uh, is uh, you need resources to fill that demand. And one of the biggest things they ran into this time around was having qualified personnel that know what they're doing on the ground as far as how to make movies. When you don't have the right people in place, you lose money at the end of the day. In case you guys all didn't know, every movie is its own business. Yeah. Right? They start out their own LLC, they have their own budget, they do their own things. So as soon as a couple of people build themselves up to be more capable than what they are, and they get hired on, and then they have to fire that person and replace that person, that does it, 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 and so we the, this last production had a, a problem finding qualified people. And if you don't have enough qualified people to fill the positions that the, the film crews are looking for, then you really quickly get a black eye of hey, the tax benefit might be great, but there's no there's nobody to work out there. There's no talent, and it's not worth the tax benefit if I have to fly everybody in from Los Angeles who knows what they're doing, from New York to know what they're doing, from Lent, from, because they had to, uh, the people that I worked with that were staying with me had to fly people in from everywhere because there was a shortage, a critical shortage of talent to be able to, to, be able to fill their needs of doing basic things like electrical work or camera work or simple production assistant work. Like and it is different work. Yeah. It is a completely it different is. work. Uh, fully, and this is, like I said, it's a completely different thing, but it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a different world than I think a lot of people, myself included, I've learned so much about this last week that it's, it's, it cuts both ways. So yeah, yeah. and it's also knowing uh, what tier, there's different tiers of movies. Mm -hmm. Right now, and that has to do with like, are unions involved? Are these things involved? Are these? There, it's so it's so much more complicated than I ever gave it credit for. To uh, your to your point about staffing, at the conference last week, they they announced that uh, beginning in January, they're opening the Academy for Film and Television in Oklahoma City, where their entire their goal is to like quick training. Uh, that can be that can be worked around mm -hmm. people's existing schedules. So an electrician who wants to get into the film industry over a six to eight week period, they're trying to train these people up so by they can have a their so their workforce can explode right. by the middle of next year. That's so they, awesome. that begins say, in yeah, January. Well, that's capitalism at its finest. It so is. If the industry grows, they'll find a way to get right. to train the people. That that's I mean, that's plenty good. On the, the on the problems are more. The studio investment side, Existential that. they mentioned that probably the next big step for Oklahoma is on the, the level of, of sound stages. And like a, a large sound stage uh, is probably about 20,000 square feet of soundproof, uh, 40 foot tall ceilings with an additional 6,000 square feet of, a, of, of mill space where they, they design and build the sets at that 6,000 square feet, move it into the 20,000 square feet. And those, those sound stages run about $30 million. And so the, the Oklahoma Film and Music Office and the state legislature are wrangling how to... Film and Music has taken the legislators out to California to show them this is what it has to have for, for this to explode the way it can. Mm -hmm. This is what we're lacking in terms of infrastructure that that Georgia and New Mexico have. Those are the two competitors right now that are they're, they're light years ahead of us, but they're also maxed out on that. Like you can't uh, get into a soundstage in New Mexico right now because they're booked up for years. So can I ask a question? Yeah. yeah. How much was that uh, sports complex going to cost? Oh, so you mean Guthrie could reinvest that $15 million of unsure sports for the future to say, hey, state, we'll put in $15 million of the projected $30 million of the first big stout stage and then get guaranteed jobs all day long. I'm probably booking up because all the Avenger movies were all made in Georgia. Uh, that's why they... So multi, let's million, let's look at billion dollar bill. Let's look at well, but even that's not even this further, but that's I think a, a um, worthy But that's another tax anyway. Worthy we can't do it with this time. My, my last little bit of anecdotal whatever for that is that this at the end of this fiscal year 
they're saying that uh, about forty million dollars will be a, uh, those are those are the production outputs in Oklahoma. So the film industry will spend forty million dollars this year <coughs> movies and TV. Um, at the same time, Georgia companies will be have spent nine billion dollars in Georgia. So that's that's the gap. Mm -hmm. But there's that also shows how much Oklahoma has, and the industry itself has completely changed to where every entity is scrambling to make content, like movies and television shows. Every everybody in the world is launching their streaming service right now. Disney did theirs last week. You know the, the networks are launching theirs, and so the networks used to they had to just produce a few shows. To fill up their nighttime viewing, now they have to produce enough to fill up an entire streaming service, and so they're scrambling to produce thousands of shows to you know fill up these streaming channels, and so the whole country is trying to figure out you know how they can talk industries into these, this industry into setting up shop in their state. No more staff comments. I'm done. <laughs> Any additional board comments? Uh, two. Go for it. Be really quick. What I've, I've been doing, like Justin can tell you, I've looked over the uh, past five years of every application. I had them email them all to me and I reviewed them all. Yeah, I printed those suckers out. I know. You turned them out and I, I went through them. And the one thing that I think that there should be more discussion, I guess, on is the review, the after action report. For several years, a lot of these organizations didn't even turn one in, and when they did, it was fairly nonsensical information, like, it, like they didn't even care what they wrote. didn't matter as long as they wrote something. When the numbers wouldn't even match, they wouldn't even make any sense, right? Uh, from one year to the next, you know, like, and I'm just like, this doesn't make any sense. Or you had some, some, um, some, some of the organizations randomly switching between for-profit and non-profit. I mean, and none of this was ever addressed, you know, and is there a vetting process for nonprofit organizations, right? You can't just go up to, even a nonprofit, because I sit on the board of a nonprofit, you just can't go, hey, state, give me money, and they're like, oh, you're just a nonprofit, let me give you tax dollars. That's not how it works. There's a vetting process. You have, we have to see your financials, we have to make sure, you're, we have to actually review your financials, like, not just the ones you give us, the actual ones you have to submit to the state of Oklahoma. And then what are your controls? Who sits on your board? How do you make decisions of true vetting process before you dole out tax dollars? Instead of just like, hey, we're a nonprofit now. Give us, give us some tax dollars to do what we want. And I'm not saying anything bad about any of these organizations. I'm saying the control is in place because when we look back, if we were to actually try to find some of these tax dollars and receipts, could we find them? Because these are, at the end of the day, tax dollars. Are they not? Sure. Right? And tax dollars of the people must be fully accounted for, should they not? And so if I were to look at any one of these and go like, hey, I'd really like to see this uh, $4,938 receipt for X service, could we find it? If the answer is no, then I think we need to address a systemic, you know. Address why, yeah. Address not even that, but even it goes it goes farther to, 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 to when you look at some of these Things they, they they fully say that you know they're only advertising to the people within a 30 mile radius. You know, last time I checked, the whole purpose of the CVB was to sponsor organizations to put heads in beds. People don't drive 30 miles to rent a hotel room. I mean, these are these are common sense things. You know, and so um, and and so to that event, going to my second comment. I fully disagree with the current structure of doling out all the money in one fell swoop because now if anything else comes along, we are powerless to support it. We have no money left in the kitty. That's why I was wondering about the thousand. Like, so well that was just a, that was just because it, it was that from the last meeting, it was just because it just so happened that everything added up to one thousand dollars less and it just stayed there. But so you know, we're powerless to do anything for the next year. We're powerless to support anything for the next year with a token donation of $1,000. And so I fully disagree with the current setup of doing everything once and, and, and writing all the checks, allegedly, uh, in the beginning, because it leaves us, no, leaves us no wiggle room, no adjustments, if anything comes along. Um, 
for example, I was thinking, I was looking at things, right? And things that really draw things, people out, and I was looking at different events that are held around the country that move different places. One thing I was very shocked to find was that there's a, um, do you know there's a pipe fitters competition? International pipe fitters competition. Do you guys know about that? Yeah. <laughs> welding competition. International welding competition. You know what the grand prize for the international welding competition is? Believe it or not, it's not. Oh, it's not. It's five thousand dollars in a new Lincoln welder to get the international competition for welding to get all the high school students, all the students, people flying in from Germany, to say they're the best welder. You know what's what's twenty minutes away from here? Cushing. It's only the biggest pipeline conglomeration in the entire United States. I wonder if we got any pipe fitters that would love to prove they're the best pipe fitter, and they actually have competitions. Well, that's a different kind of pipe fitter. Pipe fitters are sprinkler guys. As far as the other parts, as far as well, exactly even, right. but even well, the other welders well, well, and pipe fitters for be up there. big, bigger, you know, pipelines, they have competitions for these things. And I've seen them. You can go on YouTube. You can find these things. And these are people that are not traveling from Oklahoma. They're traveling from all over the world because the they oil motel rooms. Because the oil and gas <laughs> industry is a worldwide thing to draw from. And so I think that. The more we broaden our, if we look at these kinds of events and, and find ways to, you know, if we could imagine what a ten thousand dollar prize. Hey, Guthrie's willing to. We, we, you, you bring your event to us. We put up ten thousand dollars, and then all of a sudden you have every major organization like Halliburton showing up, because that's what these things are. Halliburton, Exxon, Lincoln Welder. You know that that celebrates and you know. The, the blue collar way, and I just think that God, yeah. those kind of things. But Broke let's so like so for my but my basic thing. Let's say somebody <coughs> wanted to do that. Hey, I want to put up a prize of six thousand dollars for a whole weekend of, of the best welders in the United States to come here. We can't support it now for at least another how long? You know, fun. I'm going home. Listen, <laughs> so yeah, we're home. We're, so the best we can do is figure out what to do with the next thousand dollars for the next fiscal year. And I think that's not the best way forward when we're talking about trying to be positioning ourselves to do better to draw because now we have nothing, we have no bullets left to shoot. I, 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 I hear you and understand what you're saying and I, and I agree with you to a certain extent, but I think that to plan that would probably be more a matter of like, in terms of making a recommendation for each one of these, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if making a recommendation like throughout the year is the best way. To, like you know, to weigh is the best way to weigh these against each other, or to you know to make a, a, a recommendation with them as a whole. Mm -hmm. I think for things like what you're talking about, whether it's a pipe fitter convention or whatever that, that blank, whatever that might be. I think those are the kind of things that we have to plan in advance for the next, when, you're, when we're working on the, the next coming budget year, we say how much do we want to set aside for whatever that might be, and how much do we want to set aside for this type program of event support for you know local sure. events, people who are putting things on, and say how much we want to allocate to both of those things, and plan that for the coming year, and then can, I would recommend doing what we just did um, weighing these event funding requests against each other, with each other, to plan for the year, but then also have maybe another uh, line item for recruiting a, a conven conventions or whatever it might be. But I don't see a problem in looking at all these together uh, because that's typically what organizations do when it comes to grant funding requests for a budget year. Um, looking at those on a rolling basis um, I don't know how that could be done in a in a really fair, um, objective way. I think setting up different line items for different types of things in advance is the better way to do that. Maybe to include both of what you're talking about yeah. and what we did tonight. I think. I don't. I don't. I, I just think that shooting all our bullets in, in one year leaves us. I agree with what you're saying, but we have already committed 19 of our $20,000. We, we just yeah. voted on it. We already, we all agree. This is what we're supporting. 
We have nothing left. We have no, that's just my whole thing. Yeah, right? I hate to run out so, of ammunition. It's I would also just, a smaller budget than we used to have. If it was a smaller budget, then I'm pretty sure we would have had Red Brick Knights put theirs in there. I think they re, 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 uh, pulled theirs out out of consideration for the fact that they knew our budget wasn't going to be big and things like that. I'm sure we had other things that not that were not in the last, in this year's, right? There was like three or four different organizations that were not in this year's request filed that were in the previous four years' worth. I think... That was just a, maybe a couple of phone calls, please. Were those all ones right. that we approved last spring? Uh, not all of them. They're not all the same. There's there's several of them that do overlap, but they're not all the same. That's what I'm saying. That's why I wanted to look at them for four years in a row to see what the trends are. I, I, didn't, so, I didn't call anybody. Now yeah, I'm not anybody. But what I'm saying it's just oh. it's very it's very very curious that we got our budget cut exactly four months ago, and then all of a sudden all of the requests come in to exactly nineteen thousand dollars. It's just when it was forty thousand dollars last year. That's just <coughs> it's just very interesting when you look at the numbers. So anyways that's my that's my comment. More accountability, better planning. Cool. I agree with you on that first one. I mean, yeah, I mean you I could put together like a form, maybe more like a specific form. Well, we have a specific. Yeah. Form. What are the like? What are the moves to actually have that? Well, well but happen? I'm talking about what's an after the fact. Right. Well, this is well, this is it right here. It's this one right here. There's a um, there's a on the back on each one. What percentage of your total budget is going to cost you? Your day. post event project report. Oh, okay. It's this right here. Post event project report. It's exactly one page. That if you look at each of them, yeah, there's nothing there. Right, and then, but so when, would a, so when it comes to this aspect of it, right, if we don't have a good after action report, if we haven't studied exactly where the money was spent, if we don't have a good handle on any of that, then you don't know why you failed, or if it did fail, why not? For example, born and bred in Oklahoma, right? We just saw that get, we, we just saw that, right? Lots of advertising, lots of effort, and then it fizzled, shut down the day early. Do we know why? Wasn't it because she was running it by herself? I think it was a. Like, I've, I've met with her since then, mm -hmm. and there's uh, uh, there's a long list of things that could be done differently. I'm sure. Yeah. Is that in our after action report? Because we did support that, didn't we? Yeah, we haven't received a report from them yet. So. And they've got like, you know, right. We, we asked them to be turned in, like, I don't know what, how many days, but I don't think it's been like. Crazy amount of time since they had their own. Just, uh, so what? So this is this is all they have to fill out, or they give you something else? No, that's the that's the form that they're asked to fill out after after the, the event. Yeah. Oh. Right. I think uh, <laughs> I'm not opposed to. I, I, sorry. Sorry. Can I just ask? <laughs> um, so what is the if we wanted to make that more like in depth or whatever? Like, what's the process for doing that? I don't think that's a bad idea. Uh, I'm not sure making, anyone does. Making some recommendations as a board, mm -hmm. and uh, and I can take those to the city manager and have those changed. Uh, keep in mind, though, like, I'm not I'm not opposed to like changing this at all or adding to it or whatever. Um, but I think we need to keep in mind as, if we did that that the organizations who apply for event supporting event support run the spectrum of capability in turn like some of them might have like you know uh, a robust board with an executive director who has time to put up together a 10 page report to hand it in for a certain amount of you know for in, as an after action report some of them are at the opposite end of that in terms of you know time and capability and also it you run the spectrum of actual funding that they've asked for. So I think that an after action report, or post event report, whatever you want to call it, just needs to be something that we're, in, especially when we're talking about like local volunteers, we're not asking them to spend, you know, 80 hours on putting together a report. I'm not saying that's what we do now or what we what would happen, but it's something to keep in mind if that does change that we're not asking something that. Over taxes, a very small organization. And it looks to me like, and not to get 
into the weeds on this, but I mean, we put on here copies of receipts for services or goods for which funding was approved. Yeah. I mean, so well, this is actually it's in the writing whether we so get it. It's not it we get it. I mean, so maybe it's just right. So what I what I'm saying is, yeah, when I say an enforcement thing, that's why I said we'll go back to vetting. If you're going to ask for tax dollars, you need to be able to do it, and that's. That's where I come out. If you don't have the infrastructure to properly account for things, then don't ask, don't ask for tax dollars. What I don't understand is how come this is post event and they're right. still estimating three hundred right. to so five hundred. That's a big. The thing right before people. this is this is why I asked for yeah. all of this well, so I could review. Some of it you're not going to know, like yeah. the fireworks. You're not going to know yeah. exactly yeah. how many people. Do you do you but there's well, there's ways. Days, you check their hotel but there's but there's ways, right? So what we're but what I'm saying is when you look at the, the list of things that aren't included. Some, some organizations do it, some organizations do it in piecemeal, some don't do it at all. But if you read what's on the quote-unquote contract, what people are asking for. Proof of display of Guthrie, logo, event, print, website, social media coverage, including copies of each print promotion and screenshots of website and social media coverage. Good luck. Uh, copies of receipts for services for goods for which funding was provided, i.e. If somebody wanted the city the $2,500 for insurance, where's the copy of their seat to show that they pay for the insurance? Good luck. Uh, estimated attendance. That is, that is a, you know, I mean, you got to be able, you can, you can have three volunteers clicking on things. Hey, you know, that's, that's better than just going, wow, 25,000 people showed up to a fireworks show in May, even though there's only 10,000 people in Guthrie. Can we, can we get a little bit more, you know, specific? We're talking about tax dollars. Estimate number of local hotel rooms used within city number. It's the number of overnight stays. So, I mean, clearly it's flawed in the reporting. We get that. Right. But how, so the question is, to make that actionable, like, how do we go about better enforcement or working that in? Like, we can talk about it here, which is what this is for, but if it goes nowhere, then it's not right. helpful. We'll have the same argument over and over again. So I think it's think just, it? that's what I'm saying, I think it's it's not for now. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got time, obviously. We've got a whole year. <laughs> no, well, it seems, it right seems to me, too, though, I mean, like you're saying, we have time and we've already done all of this, but it also might be something that people who frequently ask for money events would have to get used to. And so, like, a rollout or... or a heads up, a long time coming. <laughs> yeah, and I think... Um, Part of it would, would also be the the city saying, you know, if this isn't, I, if the city wanted to make that decision, mm -hmm. if we don't get this, you don't get funded again. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is a statement that, I, you know. I think that's a good statement. It sounds, yeah, it sounds it fantastic. It holds them accountable and they're more likely sure. to do it. But no. the, the city already did. So I'm kind of curious about how we're going to go forward about this because it says by signing this, the understand I agree that I have to provide all these things. I think many yeah, the, the city's not going to allow it to slide all these right. years. No, that's right. what I'm saying. Right. Right. Step right. back in and say, hey, look, totally this agree. paperwork's but not going to be filled out. We need to fill it out. If we're not getting the <coughs> event then you support, fill out, we're not going to fund you. If we're not going to get the event, if we're not getting event support, if we're seeing declining event turnouts, we need to know why. Was it like, you know, we don't have any way to gauge the effectiveness of these tax dollars, like zero. Just from a practicality standpoint, I mean, that you can find information about what's working and what's not like right. by an after event report. Right. It makes sense and for it to be filled out. But right now, we, we have not. Hopefully, maybe. I mean, you can at least have a better idea than a blank sheet of paper. That's right. <laughs> Well, I think well, right. uh, they saw that it was here. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 specific yeah. item and just say, you need a receipt. Well, I mean, if you, we yeah, gave you $5,000 for, for an advertising no, contract that you did. It can't be that hard to do, provide a receipt. Yeah, receipt. Well, that's what I'm saying, but if you that's go through, that, it's on there, but there's no receipts. There's so absolutely zero receipts. Most of these are specifically items. It can't be that hard if all you're doing is particular would be the bulldog who would chase them down for the receipts. So KTV, careful. Bobby, how do you mean? You could treat this like a because I'm a teacher, um, so we use rubrics, right? But what we want our kids to do here's your checklist. You could do use that like a rubric and say when you have it all done.
turn it into me. Okay, less than ten percent. I'll grade it. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> you go through and make sure it's there. It is there. Only, it is yep. If it's not, the, the give it back changed. or yeah. don't give it. There you go. Yeah, and they, know, they have to turn it in correctly or else about the no funding. Yeah, so like yeah. Yeah. Because, because they know what the, is expected <laughs> of them. Others that I'm hungry. Anybody, anybody else have any no. okay. All right. board comments for tonight? No. Okay. Hey, <laughs> just wait. Just say this meeting. <laughs> so we yeah. Yeah. So we have Does the meeting for next year? Yeah. Okay. Do I have a motion? Oh, what happens? Um, <laughs> in terms of a, of, a, of a meeting in December, the... the Third Monday of December. Does that sound like something that everybody feels? Third Monday. What date is that? Let me look it up. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm I'm driving driving the four city council meeting. Probably not going to sound good to me. Uh, one, two, three. The sixteenth. I won't be here. Yeah. The third the Monday the is council. the sixteenth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just like you know, so they won't be here. No. Christmas is the next week. Yeah. So, of the four of you who are here, you're a no for that? And that, okay, oh, yeah. 16th, any feeling for that? I'm not going anywhere. Do you think we'll have any other board meeting, board members by then? Or? Supposed to tomorrow night? Yeah, you will. Are you going to go find some for us? We've got, uh, I don't know, like, there, are there, are, there are three opportunities for that to occur tomorrow evening at yep. City Council. So, there's a chance that we might have. Three more people okay. for the 16th. So, um, so are we set there for the 16th? I'll go ahead and proceed like we're going to have a meeting on the 16th, and we'll just see how that looks in terms of a quorum um, between now and then. Just add it to my weekend. 530. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, does that mean somebody should have a motion to adjourn later? Yeah, there's a motion to adjourn. It says apparently according to these minutes. Yes. I'll make a motion. Yeah, a motion. Cool. Do I have a second? <laughs> 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 <laughs>